In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of this week are very special days in the Church. Days of prayer and formerly also of fasting instituted by the Church to appease God's anger at the man's transgressions, to ask protection in calamities, and to obtain a good and bountiful harvest. Recently, we had one of the rogation days, the one called Major, on the 25th day of April. The three days before the Feast of the Ascension are called Minor Rogation Days, happening this week. The major rogation, which, by the way, has no connection with the feast of St. Mark, seems to be of very early date. St. Gregory the Great, he died in 604, regulated the already existing custom. The minor rogations were introduced by St. Mamertus, Bishop of Vienne, and were afterwards ordered by the Fifth Council of Orléans, which was held in 511, and then approved by Pope Leo III, that's the ninth century. This is asserted by several saints and by the Roman martyrology. Some authors think that the minor rogations were introduced at an even earlier date by Saint Lazarus. The liturgical celebration now consists of the procession and the rogation mass. The order to be observed in the procession of the major and minor rogation is given in the Roman ritual. After the antiphon exurge domine, the litany of the saints is chanted and each verse and response is said twice. After the verse Sancta Maria, the procession begins to move if necessary, the litany may be repeated or some of the penitential or gradual psalms added. The Roman breviary gives the instruction all persons bound to recite the office and who are not present at the procession are bound to recite the litany, nor can it be anticipated. As members of the laity, you are not strictly bound to join the procession or to recite the litany, but the church can really use your prayers. And if you have some specific spiritual or temporal need, these are the days you should take advantage of. In short, this coming Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, Make sure to recite the litany of the saints, either before you go, for example, to work, when you wake up in the morning, or when you say the rosary after the litanies of, the, of Our Lady. I mentioned the antiphon exurge domine. The text is taken from the last verse of Psalm 43. Arise, O Lord, help us and redeem us for thy name's sake. Then the cantors sing verse 2 of the same psalm. We have heard, O God, with our ears. Our fathers have declared to us the work thou hast brought in their days and in the days of old. Then the exurge dominis repeated. Arise, O Lord, help us and redeem us for thy name's sake. In singing or reciting this antiphon and verse, it is our turn to address God and say, <clears throat> we have heard, O oh, oh God, with our ears about the many graces you gave our ancestors, the miracles, the wonders. They were in need and you heard their prayer. When there were plagues, you brought back health to them. When there were, was famine, you caused food to grow. When heresy was destroying the church, you produced saints, doctors, holy popes, and the order was restored. 
when infidels were about to conquer Europe, you gave Catholics the victory of Lepanto. I can go on all day with the, so many and wonderful favors that God has given Catholics all throughout the ages. But let us go back to Lepanto. I must mention the special role of Saint Pius V. And today we commemorate this great Pope. Let me quote from a little book called The Excellence of the Rosary by Father Franks. Another wonderful victory through this miraculous weapon of Christianity, the Rosary, was the defeat of the Turkish navy at Lepanto on October 7th, 1571, the so-called Reformation, of which Martin Luther was the originator, had spread over the whole of Europe, bringing in its trail destruction, dissension, and war. The Turks, who had long thirsted for vengeance upon the Christians, found conditions favorable for their plans. They gathered all their forces to assail the Christian lands, the princes of Europe were either indifferent or were besieged with difficulties in their own lands. And Luther even said he preferred the Turks to the papacy. Pope Pius V alone realized the great danger that threatened Christianity, and he called upon the Christian people to defend country and church against the common enemy. The Christian forces which could be assembled were very small compared with those of the Turks. Nevertheless, Pius V knew uh, of uh, another power, which he realized would be a mighty ally. With all his energy, he exhorted his people to implore the Blessed Virgin and Glorious Queen of Heaven through the Rosary to come to the assistance of the Christian army. It was, as uh, Leo XIII said in his com commendation of the Rosary, an ennobling sight which drew the eyes of the whole world. On one side, not far from the Corinthian Sea, the Christians prepared to sacrifice life for religion and country, while gathered on the other side, imploring through the Rosary Mary's assistance for the fighting Christians, were many Christians unable to take up arms. The small army of Christians attacking the great force of the Turkish fleet was an undertaking similar to the assault of David upon the giant Goliath. On October 7th, 1571, the deciding battle was fought in the Bay of Lepanto. The battle raged from six o'clock in the morning until six o'clock at night. It was one of the most terrific battles ever fought. And lo, in the evening, towards six o'clock, the battle ended in the victory of the Christians over their powerful uh, enemy. This wonderful victory of the Christians was undoubtedly due to the assistance of the Blessed Virgin. Pope P uh, Pius V so declared, and in memory of this wonderful achievement, he added to the litany of the Blessed Virgin the supplication, help of Christians, pray for us. He also ordained uh, that the anniversary of this victory be celebrated as the Feast of Our Lady of Victory, which Gregory XIII subsequently styled the Feast of the Rosary. So that's the end of the quote of this little wonderful work. <clears throat> so how fitting that a victory against the enemies of God, the enemies of the Church, was brought about through the intercession of Our Lady. How fitting that the uh, minor rogation days happen during the month of May. And let me s say a few words about the link between Our Lady and prayer and this month. May is the month of the Blessed Virgin Mary. The May devotion 
in its present form, originated in Rome, when a Jesuit priest, Father Latomia, made a vow to devote the month of May to Mary to counteract infidelity and immorality among the students. This happens at the end of the 18th century. From Rome, the practice spread to the other Jesuit colleges and thence to nearly every Catholic church of the Latin Rite. This practice is the oldest instance of a devotion extended over an entire month, and it is enriched with many indulgences. For example, 300 days each day by assisting at a public function or performing the devotion in private. Plenary indulgence on any day of the month or on one of the first eight days of June under the usual conditions. The usual conditions are to go to confession with an intention to renounce all attachment to sin, second, to receive Holy Communion, and third, to pray for the general intentions of the Church, intentions of the Supreme Pontiff when there is one, or the intentions of the Church in general when there is no Pope. We have plenty of uh, incentives to start praying more and also more devoutly. Laziness can take a rest this month. Let us resolve to go to Mary and ask her for all we need. Her intercession is most powerful and we give her a great deal of honor when we keep going to her, asking, imploring and begging. Actually, she's offended if we stop asking because her role in heaven is to help us. So remember the, the title that this today's uh, Pope, St. Pius V, today's commem is commemorated, added to her litany. Help of Christians, pray for us. So help of Christians, pray for us. If prayer is already infallible, when we ask for a spiritual favor for ourselves, this is one of the conditions, with attention, another condition, with humility, with confidence and perseverance, imagine how much more unfailing our prayer will be if we have recourse to Our Lady. So keep that in mind during the next three days of the rogation days. St. James exhorts us in today's epistle to be doers of the word and not hearers only. It is not enough for you to listen to the word of God, to sermons, to instructions. You must do your part. You are not doing your part if you love sin. You are not doing your part if you keep frequenting occasions of sin. You are not doing your part if you are not asking God day and night for your conversion. You are definitely not doing your part if you are not imploring your heavenly uh, mother for that particular grace you know you need the most. Amen, amen, I say to you, says our Lord in today's gospel, if you ask the Father anything in my name, he will give it to you. Hitherto you have not asked anything in my name. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. Let me reflect briefly on the necessity of, of prayer. And I will follow um, the, the teaching of St. Alphonsus in his wonderful book, The Preparation for Death. St. John Chrysostom says that as the body without the soul is dead, so the soul is dead without prayer. He also teaches that as water is necessary to prevent the decay of plants, so prayer is necessary to preserve us from perdition. God wills that all men be saved, that's St. Paul, first epistle to Timothy, and is unwilling that any be lost. The Lord dealeth patiently for your sake, not willing that anyone should perish, 
but that all should return to penance. That's St. Peter, his second epistle, chapter 3, verse 9. But, yes, God wants our salvation, but he also wishes that we ask him for the graces necessary for salvation. For, on the one hand, it is impossible for us to observe the divine commands and save our souls without the actual assistance of God. And on the other, ordinarily speaking, God will not give us his graces unless we ask them from him. Hence, the, Hol the Holy Council of Trent has declared that God has not commanded impossibilities because he either gives us the proximate and actual grace to fulfill his precepts or he gives us the grace to ask him for this actual aid. St. Augustine teaches that God gives without prayer the first graces, such as vocation to the faith and true repentance. But all other graces, and particularly the gift of perse perseverance, he gives only to those who ask them. Hence, theologians, after St. Basil, St. Augustine, St. John Chrysostom, Clement of Alexandria, and others, teach that for adults, prayer is necessary as a means of salvation. So that without it, it is impossible to be saved. And the scriptures are very clear on this point. In St. Luke, we read, we ought always to pray. We read also in St. Luke, pray lest ye enter into temptation. And in today's gospel, St. John, ask and you shall receive. St. Paul to the Thessalonians, pray without ceasing. The words we ought, pray, ask, according to St. Thomas uh, and the generality of theologians, imply a strict precept which binds under grievous sin, particularly in three cases. First, when a person is in the state of sin, so you are in the state of sin, you must pray, that's a precept, that's a commandment. Secondly, when he is in danger of death. And thirdly, when he is in great danger of falling into sin. So danger of falling into sin gives you a special obligation to pray. Theologians teach that ordinarily he who neglects prayer for a month or at the most for two months is guilty of a mortal sin. The reason is because prayer is a means without which we cannot obtain the helps necessary for salvation. Ask and you shall receive. He who asks receives. Then says Saint Teresa, he who does not ask does not receive. And before her, Saint James said the same, you have not because you ask not. Prayer is particularly necessary to obtain the virtue of continence. And said the wise man, as I knew that I could not otherwise be continent, except God gave it, I went to the Lord and besought him. This is the book of wisdom. If you want the virtue, you most necessary virtue of holy purity, chastity, continence, you have to ask for it. St. Alphonsus concludes, he who prays is certainly saved. He who does not pray is certainly lost. All the elect are saved by prayer. All the damned are lost by neglect of prayer, and their greatest despair is and shall be forever caused by the conviction that they had it in their power to save their souls so easily by prayer, and that now the time of salvation is no more. As we elevate our prayers to the Father through Christ, we also offer supplication to Christ through Mary. Let us be doers of the word by devoting the next three days to prayer 
and the whole month of May to Our Lady, help of Christians. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.